Welcome, everybody, to another podcast. This week, we are talking about people. I named it People Suck, uh, but that's we're going to be talking about people. People. I could have, I could have named it People Are Awesome, but I don't know. People suck. Uh, patients, clients, customers, drivers. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. Coworkers. Bosses, employees, uh, the list the list goes on. It's just difficult to work with people. This podcast is about how to effectively work with people better. Because if you can do that, you can build time, you can build relationship, and you can build efficiency in your business. It's so important to highly and effectively work with people around you. You can't do what you do without them. You know that. Uh, so people don't suck. They, they're actually great. You need them. Um, Living on an island may sound nice sometimes, but in all reality, <clears throat> we need each other to f- to reach a common goal, to get things done, to whatever may be on the list. You, you just need help to get things done. There's just not enough time in a day to do it, and there's not enough strength in your body to do what you need to do every single day, day in and day out. You just need help. So yes, people, talking about people, feelings, emotion, how do you work better with people. What do you need to do to work better with people? One thing that I've learned through my life is building relationships and building friendships are two different things. You can't be friends with everybody. And trust me, you don't want to, but you can have many relationships with people. You can't. And that's limited as well, because you only have so much space to do that as well. You can only have so much relationships with people as well. And the number from sociology comes, I think 150, I think your, your group of people that you can keep in your mental Rolodex and actually have some type of caring for is about 150. So all of you with like 2000 friends on, on social media, you do not have 2000 friends. <laughs> there are 2000 people that you've been acquainted with on the network, but it's about 150. So think about that for a second. So really how, how many friends can you have? It's significantly less than that. And they always say, I can count the number of friends on one hand. And that's because that's how much emotional capacity you have to do that. So when it comes to working, we have to have a fine line between friends and relationships, but you definitely want to build strong relationships with the people that are around you and the people in your community because everyone needs everyone. So in your business, what can you do to improve relationships and that's one thing is defining a friend and a, and a relationship. The, the best thing to do to build a relationship is to make an ask. Uh, the, one of the hardest things I've ever had in my lifetime is to ask other people for anything. And it goes back to childhood. Uh, I remember my grandma, my grandma in Italy, we were visiting in Italy one, one summer and it, it was like nine 30 at night and Italy, you know, N- Naples, Italy, Napoli, Italy is like close to the equator. So the days are like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It starts to get dark after 7.30. It's like 9.30 at night. I'm walking up this dirt road from my uncle's house to her house, which is, you know, a, not even a quarter mile, going up there to drop something off. And she scares the crap out of me. She's sitting outside in a rocking chair knitting. I could barely see. I'm 11 years old. She was like 88 at the time. Yeah. And, and she's sewing or knitting. And I'm like, no, no, what are you doing? Like, this is, she's like crazy. Anyways, the story, the story here is she wanted to leave me with her piggy bank. It was like a ceramic piggy bank. And I'm 11 years old. And I'm like, no, no. I always said no. And I remember that no. I'm like, why do I say no to that? And up to today, I reflect on that, the no, because I just didn't want to have that reminder of her going back to Canada, whatever it may have been emotionally. It was the no. And then no transcended throughout my life. It's always no. Hey, do you need anything? No, I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I never really opened up about myself, but the best thing you can do, if you have a problem with no as well, the best thing you can do is make an ask. Ask people for something to do. When we first moved here within months, moving to Florida, Hurricane Irma was ripping through here. We were visiting Canada, my parents at the time, and we couldn't do anything with our house. So my neighbor that we just met, you know, met Joe, he texted me. He's like, hey man, do you want me to put up your shutters? I was like, dude, it's a two story house. Like, are you going to seriously do this? He's like, yeah, well, yes, please, you know, put up my shutters. You know, he shuttered up our, didn't, we didn't need it. It ended up, you know, category three, didn't really do anything to our neighborhood here North of Tampa. But anyways, the ask was there and it was done. And they, you know, when we came back, we took them down and that really, I was like, man, I, 
I'm surprised I even asked him. I should have just you know left it. But making an ask can go so far in building a relationship. Now, this is a story of building a great relationship with our neighbors, and, and that's really cool. Uh, friends, you got to limit that. You, it, you, we wanted to be friends, and you get disappointed that they're not friends and they have busy lives. But we have a relationship, which is very, a very strong relationship. I can make an ask. I can, they own their own business. They do, you know, ultrasound. They might be co cooperating or collaborating with our business somehow. Very cool story there. And all it started with was asking an ask that that was done with, and they didn't expect anything in return. It was just an organic ask. You can do these things in your life and from your employees and your coworkers and your employers. You can make an ask. And that's very hard for most people. Some, maybe some of you are listening to this. You're like, I can ask for anything I want. I'm, I'm cool with that. That is a gift. That is a true gift or you're completely egotistical maniac. I don't know what it is, but it's probably a gift to be able to just ask people for stuff. That, that's pretty cool, but it, it's a strength and it can be overbearing as well. If you make too many asks, then, then I mean, it outweighs the relationship, right? If you're making too many asks, that's step number one, but working better with people or working, uh, smarter with people, you know, you, you got to build a relationship as early as possible, whether it's a coworker or whatever it may be, you need to build a relationship as early as possible. That's number one. As soon as they come in, start building a relationship. You say, well, how, how do I build a relationship with a new person? Feedback. It all comes with feedback. Hey, Sally, welcome to the team. If there's anything I could do for you during your first you know, week or first month here, let me know. Uh, I'll answer as many questions as I, as I possibly can. Maybe you're not the owner. Maybe it's a coworker that comes in. Maybe it's a co-associate that's in with you in your practice. They're, they're hiring another one. How can I give you feedback to, to navigate the waters of this new clinic that we're in or new business that we're in? So give feedback, give relationship advice as far as like what you did when you first started, what worked for you when you first started. That's a great way for them. As an employer, giving them, hey, when I first started, this is what really worked for me. Share credit. This is number two and is easily forgotten by most people is to share credit. We want to take credit for things because we think it's going to move us up the corporate ladder. But when you own your own business and you're in your own niche, there is no ladder. You are the entire mothership. So sharing the credit for good ideas and any ideas goes a long way. It makes it more of a team effort. It's never about I, it's about us. That works really well. And acknowledging other people's skills, acknowledging what they're doing, what they're very good at. Uh, as, as an employer, it's also your, your job to make sure you point out what they're weak at. That can be tough as well. And that can be another podcast for another time on how to build strengths with people's weaknesses. But for right now, it's really talking about and acknowledging the contributions that they're making for you and your business and for them. Honestly, it's a team effort, right? Uh, and Maybe maybe one of the hardest thing, acknowledging and listening to the feelings that people have. How are you feeling about this? How does that make you feel? How, how is your stress level? All Asking those questions from time to time are great. How I do this in my business, weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with every employee. Then we also have a team meeting as well. The team meeting is like goal-oriented, uh, the week's to-dos, housekeeping, um, statistics, Revenue, that's as a team, we go through that. But then we also have breakouts one-on-one -on -one with me and the associates, with me and the CAs, because we want to know, I want to know how they're feeling. These, these go a long way. As you become a CEO in your business, whether you have two employees or 22 employees, as you become a CEO, that's what ends up taking the time in your schedule is nurturing your employees and your coworkers and your team. You know, it's hard for me on this podcast to say employees and employer because we don't do that in our office. It's all a team, team based. So build these relationships early. Those are the four things underneath that. Number one that you can do is building that relationship is doing the, you know, the little things, giving and receiving feedback, sharing credit for the good things that are being done, acknowledging their experience and skills and, and the, the contributions that they're giving to your business and, and listen to and acknowledge the feelings concerns and opinions. That's number one. Okay. The rest are pretty easy. I got six more for you. Take time to learn about them, learn about them. And sometimes again, cutting that line between friendship and relationship, there's things you ask that you want to develop a friendship with people. 
And there's things that you ask to develop a relationship with people. A relationship is just the emotional and humanistic questions that you ask people. Where'd you grow up? How many siblings do you have? How was that growing up with three sisters? And trying to relate with them, asking them questions that are outside of what you've experienced in your life to, to genuinely understand where they're from. So that's, that's another one there. Show respect. I mean, straightforward, but sometimes showing respect can look and feel different, different for many people. When you don't acknowledge um, the feelings and emotions of people, it can feel as disrespect. And this is where animosity can be created is that people are like, you never ask, you never, you never ask how I'm doing. You never ask what I'm up to. You never ask this. And it feels as betrayal. It feels as lack of respect. And then you're like, well, hang on a second. I, I totally respect you. What's going on? And you just realize that, oh, it's because I didn't acknowledge them at the level that they want to. Some people like me, you can acknowledge me once a year. That's good enough. I'm like, hey, great. You know that I have a heartbeat. Thanks. I'm happy. I'm cool with that. Other people, if you don't give them a high five every day, it's not good enough for them, right? And then you're like, oh, I wanna, who needs that kind of, you know, some people do. Some people need that. They don't even know that they need it but it's your job. It makes you just a, a stronger employer, a stronger uh, stronger CEO that is admirable and somebody that they want to work with, right? Show respect. That's my definition of respect. And number four, I am 100% guilty about. I was going to scratch it off the list. I'm like, I should not tell anybody how to do this because I'm horrible at this, is avoid oversharing. Um Oversharing plans, oversharing your thoughts. I got a million thoughts in my head every day. If I share a half a million of those every single day, people are gonna be like, this guy is a lunatic because he's only accomplishing three out of the 500,000 things that he told us. So he's just full of crap, right? I didn't realize that. I'm like, holy crap, that's too much. I've been saying way too much. It's and just keeping it to yourself. A lot of cultures have these. My dad was was one. Of, don't tell anybody anything. Don't tell anybody anything about any of your plans until they come to fruition because it's unnecessary. And then in the Greek culture, they have the evil eye. You don't want people um, being jealous about you. That's a bad thing. Being jealous about you. That's you know, uh, in the Mediterranean, it's fine. Don't have the demon. Don't don't summon demons. <laughs> it's all this crazy stuff. But really oversharing decreases your credibility. So that, that one's a big one. And even though I'm bad at it and I can admit at that, I, I keep myself conscious about that. I'm like, hey, listen, when we get there, we'll talk about it. So I'm now, now I'm the secret, secret guy. Uh, keep your interactions with co-workers positive as much as possible. As much as possible. Keep a positive attitude. Uh, when you're in the office, check it at the door when you come in. It's work time. Positive attitude, yes, it's stressful. Yes, you get behind. Yes, people make mistakes and it's frustrating. But keeping a positive attitude, say, hey, man, you, that sucked. That person waited 45 minutes. You didn't flag me. That's a that's a fumble. When you build these relationships, what ends up happening, they're like, I fumbled. It's on, it's on the instant replay. On the 20-yard line, I'm sorry. We are now stuck on our five, <laughs> right? They're, they're, they got the ball on the five. This sucks. But at least you can admit it and you can move move forward. Uh, and help new uh, employees feel welcome as early as possible and make getting your work done a priority. Make work getting your work done a priority at the end of the day, whatever the end of day checklist is, that is a priority to get done <clears throat> every single day. It builds a strong work ethic and you emulate, people will emulate that around you being like, they're here first, they're here last almost every single day. They have their checklists. They get that done. Their soap notes are always done at the end of the day. I'm slacking. I don't. I wait till the next day. I do this stuff. People will absorb what you do. And again, guilty of being too lenient and making things too easy. You get not a lazy workforce. You get a sub. You know, you get a, a loose workforce. They're like, yeah, the bound. There are no boundaries. Where can I go? And that's a lot of the feedback I've been getting as a CEO is like, there's a lot of freedom here, and it. It's great. We love working here with you because you're great, but the structure is tough because there is none or there's very little. What do I what do I do to continue to build my patient base? What do I do to improve retention? What do I do to fill in the blank? And I was like, holy smokes. Wait a minute. You just graduated last year and you don't know how to run a million dollar business? What's going on? <laughs> it took me 15 years to figure this out, right? And uh, we still do not have our crap together. 
that's, I thought that was just so important. I don't know why I didn't do a podcast like this earlier. The psychology of being a CEO is only going to take you further because other people will be able to uh, jump onto the mission and the vision cooperatively with you to guide that needle forward. Just having a mission and having a vision is great. Uh, but if people don't know how to work together to get there and what jobs need to be done to build it, then it's just a mission statement on your wall. It doesn't do anything at all. So I hope that was useful. I know some of you are going to be listening to this and be like, man, that was perfect timing. I needed that because these podcasts are based on your feedback, the struggles that you're going through in your life right now. Have a great week. Be a powerful CEO by listening to people, by being credible, and most importantly, being impeccable with your word. Just if you say it, you mean it. And if you don't mean it, don't say it. Have a great week.